This paper, Wisdom and Madness, is actually about trying to resolve an interesting puzzle that's happened recently, which is, as of about 2012, according to some measures, more money goes to the arts through Kickstarter, the crowdfunding site, than the National Endowment of the Arts, the major government organization that gives money to the arts. So this sort of raises a big question. What does that mean, right? Does that mean we get more good art, more bad art? Uh, does more art get funded? What happens when you switch from a pure expert-based system to also having crowds involved? This paper was with Raman Ananda, who's a business school professor at Harvard Business School. And he and I worked to get a group of professional judges, people who judged things like the National Endowment of the Arts, or who acted as expert critics, or helped judge prestigious theater awards. And we asked them to evaluate Kickstarter projects to see whether or not their agreement would agree with the ones that were funded by the crowd. And what we found were a few interesting things. First of all, that the crowd and experts generally agreed. So we thought at first there might be a big gap between what the experts liked and what the crowd liked. It turns out there wasn't. They were very similar. And where they disagreed with each other, the vast majority of the times, it was because the crowd was willing to fund projects that the experts were not able, willing to. So the crowd actually funded more art and had a lower threshold. And when we actually followed up what happened to these projects afterwards, it appeared that projects funded by the crowd were slightly more likely to fail, but were also appeared to be more likely to actually achieve giant success. So winning prestigious theater awards, running off Broadway. So the crowd actually seemed to do a pretty good job of selecting high variance projects, those that succeeded by a large amount uh, or else failed. When I think about what we were trying to kind of measure here, it was really answering a question that was posed by two books that were published 100 years apart. So in the 1800s, there was a book called uh, The Madness of Crowds, uh, Delusions of the Madness of Crowds. And that tried to look at things like tulip mania in Holland or Ponzi schemes and trying to understand why crowds were so often crazy. In 2004, James Sirwicky published a book called uh, The Wisdom of Crowds, all about how crowd markets are smarter than individuals and how we should do kind of group-based decision making. And this is two really interesting ideas contrasting with each other. On one hand, you have crowds are inherently crazy, right? And they, they are suffer from madness. They run after interesting ideas. And in theater, you might think of that, and some of our experts did think this would happen, would be that the crowd would tend to fund musicals about how happy internet dancing cats, right, uh, or about bacon, the kinds of things the internet likes, right? On the other hand, you have this idea that crowds are actually wise, that collectively they're actually smarter than individuals and they make great decisions and often better decisions than experts. So what I think was interesting to us was that we found a lot more support for the wise crowd than the mad crowd, even in this area which is so subjective like theater. More and more decisions that used to be in the hands of experts are also being put in the hands of internet online communities. So you could think about crowdfunding and how it's replacing expert judgment in theater or how it's replacing venture capital in some cases. There's the idea of crowd science, um, the crowdsourcing. So there's a whole bunch of things that we used to do as experts and now we throw to communities to help us solve. And we don't know a lot about when communities are better than experts and when they're the same. And I think one of the interesting findings here is even in this very subjective field of theater where you'd really expect a huge high cul culture, low culture difference, right? So the things that a theater snob would like would be very different than what the mass market would like. Even in this case, it seems like the crowd has value in adding to decisions. and helps actually lower barriers and democratize access. So I think that's a really important point that would probably apply even more in other specialized fields. So what's actually interesting is, despite the sort of famous book on the wisdom of crowds, most of the work on why crowds are smart or not has tended to kind of revolve around um, expert markets, where you have experts making decisions. And there's been some really interesting work by Shane Greenstein and others looking at things like Wikipedia and finding that Wikipedia is smart. But it's a remarkably under kind of researched field. And so uh, crowdfunding is relatively new. There's relatively little work on that. And this whole idea of testing wisdom and madness is a relatively novel. So I think it's a, a first step to trying to understand this increasingly important phenomenon. So I'm really interested in crowds in general and how internet communities operate, how we can make them work better, what uh, expert and standard organizations can they substitute for? And I think we have a huge amount of questions, right? The internet is a relatively new phenomenon in academic terms. Uh, and we're still kind of grappling with what does it do? What does it enable that we couldn't do before? How can companies use it? How can governments use it? How can individuals participate in these environments in a way to make a difference? How do we stop negative behavior? There's a huge amount of interesting questions, and I'm really excited to try and dig into.